Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of our U Data Science YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're going to do an introduction to exploratory data analysis, or EDA. Uh, whenever you're going to do any kind of advanced data science analysis, inevitably, you're always going to end up doing some type of EDA. And we're going to get into, there's, there's been a request for us to really get into some, some different stuff. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to get into the uh, famous, or, or you will learn, it's, you will soon learn that it's famous, the Titanic data set. So the Titanic data set is a great uh, data set to use for introduction to things like machine learning, uh, because you can build a model to predict the survivors. And of course, we know uh, who actually survived and who didn't survive. So whenever you're going to start off doing any type of uh, analysis, you're always going to have a, a piece where you do exploratory data analysis. And there, it's really to understand what, what, what the data set looks like, uh, what's missing, what's there in the data set, what type of variables there are. And I'm going to show you two things today. One is a very basic run through of the basic tools that you'll use for EDA. And then the second one is really just a, an amazing uh, program for Python that uh, will do your EDA for your basic, very basic EDA in two lines of code. So again, we are gonna work today in, in Jupyter Notebook and Python. Uh, we're gonna start out here. We're gonna bring in pandas. We're gonna bring in NumPy. Uh, we're gonna bring it Matplotlib and um, Seaborn. And then we're going to use we're going to use those programs. So we're going to go ahead and, and we'll run this. And once again, whenever I have a star, that means that the, the computer is thinking. Uh, what we're going to be using today is a, a data set from Kaggle. Uh, Kaggle is a data science competition uh, competition website, and we're going to use this here. That this uh, Melbourne uh, real estate data. Uh, it's a it's a competition that was had and a data set that's typically used. So we're gonna go ahead and read that in, and it's a CSV file that I've put in my working directory. So I'll go ahead and run this and when it reads it in. So the first thing I probably wanna know is what are the dimensions or the shape of my data set? And that's a very simple, we notice we called the data frame up here, something very original data. Uh, we come down here and we say, and, and again, we use pandas PD, import pandas as PD, we use uh, PD read the CSV and we, we told it what CSV to read. So now I'm going to say the name of the data frame, which is data.shape. And when I run this, it's going to tell me that I have 13,580 rows and I have 21 columns. So that tells you right off the bat, 13,000 rows, pretty good amount of data to work with uh, and 21 different uh, dimensions or variables or columns. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what type of columns or what type of, of uh, variables are these? So when I put in data.dtypes, short for data types, it's going to tell me here's the name of the column and then here's what type of variable it is. So an object is like a text object, uh, a float, an in integer 64 is an integer, float 64 is a floating number. So it tells you uh, what, what all those columns are. So it gives you some type of idea of what you're gonna be dealing with, uh, how many numbers, how many text fields, that type of thing. And then what you're probably gonna to wanna to do if you haven't already glanced at your Excel or your CSV uh, spreadsheet is you're gonna run this column.head. And when you do that, it's gonna give you the first five rows of your data set. So you can see here, up here, it told me the name, suburb, address, rooms. Now it's gonna show you the first five that are in there. And you can just scroll here over and take a look at what's there. Um, you know, I have things like address, the number of rooms, uh, what type it is, what type of house it is, the price, uh, how it was sold, all these different, the different seller, all these different items are, are in here uh, and what region it's in. And then you could also do the same thing and take a quick look at the tail these are the last five values. So remember we had 13,000 some rows and here's my last, my last five rows. And then you can also do a sample. Uh, and again, you just run, you just say data.sample. In this case, I asked for five, you can make it 10, 15, 20, whatever. And it just picks them randomly. And again, it gives you some idea of the flavor. And the reason you wanna do that is again, you wanna become familiar with the data set. So you're clear on which items you wanna include 
uh, when you begin some of your more advanced analysis. So now that we have a basic feel for our data set, uh, we're gonna come in here and, and start doing a little bit of more investigation. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plot those numeric features and we're just gonna use a histogram. So we run that and it will run, it takes a couple seconds and it'll go ahead and plot out a histogram of all your numeric features. So you can see here the distribution, you can see, you know, are, is it widely distributed? Uh, is there, you know, really just one value like this one here? Uh, is it, you know, more widely distributed? Again, it just gives you some idea of what the shape of the data looks like. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is you can just do a dot describe. And instead of looking at a charts, it will give you the basic statistical values here. So the mean, the standard deviation, the min, 25th through 75th percentiles, and the max. Again, it's just to get some flavor for what you're really looking at here. Also gives you the count. So you can see right, right away, uh, like in this example here, you know, there's 13,580 rows, but here there's only 13,518 that have a car, or, which basically means a garage. So then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at those categorical features. Uh, what are even, you know, what are they? Uh, what, what, what do they consist of? So you can use that again, that describe dot describe feature, and you can say include the objects. And when you run that, it's going to tell you the kind of the same information. It's first of all, it's going to tell you the count. So you can see which ones are uh, have all the rows there. It's going to tell you um, the how many unique values. So this is saying that over the 13,000 some rows, there's 314 unique values versus, uh, the, of course, the address. You know, there's a few duplicates in there, but for the most part, it's unique. Uh, and then the type, there's only three. The method, there's five. So it just gives you some idea, again, of, of what you're dealing with from the what, you know, what do those categorical um, features look like. And then you can also, this is an interesting technique that you can use to create a, uh, you can use a for loop to, to go through, to loop through the data. And what I'm telling it here is I'm gonna say, select the data types that are objects. And if that column is, is unique uh, and, and, it's, and I'm gonna look at the top 10 values for each one, and then I'm gonna use this uh, uh, Seaborn count plot and then I'm gonna, and, and I'm just gonna show that plot. So when I run this, it's just telling me that those categorical variables um, in this particular case where they're, you know, you can see here, here's that type where you have the majority of them are uh, H, uh, then you have M and, and T. So, what you can, where, where you can find the details on what these are. Some of them are, are self-explanatory here, but where you can find the details is in the data dictionary uh, that normally accompanies these data sets that explains what each of these items is. So that, now I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna say, okay, wanna do a little bit deeper of a dive to understand what my categorical features are. So I'm gonna group them together uh, in this particular case. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to look at those values that are, that have less than 10, and then I'm going to do a box plot. So when I do that up above here, I, I have some idea of the count, but what I don't really understand is the distribution. So what this is telling me is, is that, you know, where, where the majority of my values lie. And then of course here, this is telling me that, for example, in this particular case, I have a lot of outliers in that H value. Uh, again, it's given me some idea of how that data is distributed for those categorical variables. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to do another grouping. And this is just going to tell me the values. So this is telling me, for example, that uh, by my different factors, by my categorical variables, um, which, what is the mean? And that's what these are. This is the mean of each one of these. So what this is saying is that type H has a uh, the three a, a mean of three rooms. Here's the mean price, the mean distance. Uh, the the postcode obviously doesn't mean anything in this case, but the mean uh, number of bedroom number two, bathrooms, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then it's doing the same thing here. It's telling you the means. So it, so what we're looking at here is again, you're just trying to get an understanding of what the what these different uh, categories mean, or perhaps how they could be grouped to decide which factors to use later on in your analysis, and also to understand the data set. And then the last thing that you may want to you may want to look at is correlation between the numerical features. So the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to run this uh, the analysis here where we say data dot core or short for correlation, and then we're going to go ahead and 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 uh, have it show us what that is. And when you do this, this is just a correlation, you know, one being highly correlated uh, and, and uh, minus one being highly negative correlated. The problem with this, this one is that it's a little hard to read. Um, you know, you really don't get a, it doesn't really take your eye to exactly where it needs to be uh, to understand what's going on and which variables are correlated. And when you're doing this, you may decide, for example, that you may have through your earlier EDA said, okay, I'm gonna take out some of these variables. And, uh, but then you say, okay, well, I'm gonna look and see how they're correlated. And I may keep ones that are highly correlated. So an easier way to show the correlation is through what they call a heat map. And Seaborn will do a heat map for you. So basically the calculation that we made above here, this correlation S, uh, we're gonna go ahead and tell it. We're gonna say, go ahead and put the values on there. And when we run this, we can see that this is a little bit easier on the eyes to look at to understand where that correlation or negative correlation occurs. Uh, so here, really not a whole lot of strong correlation. Uh, this one here, this uh, factor of rooms versus uh, bedroom two. Uh, so what that's really saying is that that bedroom two, if I remember from the data dictionary, was how many homes had a second bedroom. And of course, you know, if there's a lot of rooms it's going to have, probably have a second bedroom, but this will tell you, um, you know, you can see there really wasn't a lot of negatively correlated. It only went down to, to a negative 0.4. Uh, so in this particular case, there really wasn't anything here that was highly correlated that you may want to keep in the data set. And again, these are just some basic things that you would do to understand. Uh, and you'll, you'll see more of this when we go through the Titanic data set uh, in our next series. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and do the EDA uh, or the exploratory data analysis on the Titanic data set. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna do an introduction to machine learning using that same data set. So I'm gonna show you how to use EDA to pick which factors you're gonna use in your um, analysis and your mach machine learning analysis. But before we go, I do wanna show you a pretty cool uh, program uh, there's again, you can do this with really just two lines of code. And this program is called SweetViz. And you go ahead and you import that in like any other library. And again, I'm going to read that data in. Um, I'm going to read the, that, that CSV, the same data we looked at in the previous uh, Jupyter notebook. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this. And what you're going to see here is, and you can do this with most of your programs in Python when you run them. But when you run this, what's going to happen here is you're going to see this progress bar. And a lot of times when you're, especially when you get into machine learning, you're going to see that the star comes up and it's thinking, it could be thinking for quite some time. And what you're probably wondering is, you know, should I go off and get some coffee or get a drink or whatever, take a break while I'm waiting for this thing to finish. And this is a, a, a nifty little thing that you can actually build into any of your long-term programs. So a lot of times, for example, what I'll do is if I'm running a line, a, a line or a section of code, and it's taken a really long time, I might actually stop it by hitting the stop button here or do like a break, and then restart, restart it, run again down to that section, and then put that code in there that allows for this bar to come up. So I have some idea of where it is. You know, I might just switch to a different screen and work on something different. Uh, but at least it lets you know what's going on. This here was pretty quick. Uh, it's only about 15 or 16 seconds. And then what this will do is it saved in this variable here called my report. And it used the command, you know, it's you basically said, go ahead and make uh, my report is the sweet viz analyze the data set. And that's all you had to do. And then when you run this, it's actually going to create an HTML page with some information here. So again, remember we had 21 columns. It tells me up here 
Again, my 13,580 rows, I had no duplicates. It's taken up about eight and a half megabytes of RAM. Here's my 21 features. Seven of them are categorical, 11 are numerical, and three are text. And then it's, if you, it's maybe a little hard to see on the screen here, but it, it numbered the, the, the uh, columns over here on the left-hand side. And then it does a study. It gives you information on each one. So for example, it says, okay, and you can remember this from the other, uh, the other analysis. I did, I had 100% of my values were present in the suburb. I had none missing. And there were 314 unique values with, a, with this here being, you know, 3% 3, 3 of them or 359 were this reservoir. Uh, and again, you know, you can see it, it just, it's given you some idea. Here's my address. There were, there are a lot of, 99% of them were unique. Uh, there were a couple of them that were the same. You know, there's some here that are three. Um, and then here's my rooms. And because this is a, this is a, um, it's telling me here, you know, I got about 45% uh, that are three, 28% uh, that are two, 20% uh, that are four, about 5% that are one. And then you can see here the other. And it does that for all the different pieces. It'll tell you, for example, uh, again, these are categorical. That's what this number here means. And even though these are numbers, it's still a, it still reads it as a category. Um, and then here's a number price. So it gives you the, the distribution of the price, uh, gives you some other information here. Uh, you can see this was the person who the name of the seller. You can see that uh, Mr. or Ms. Nelson here were very busy with 12% of the sales in, in Melbourne. Uh, and again, you can just see this is just a very easy way to run a quick analysis of those items. And it'll call out some things here, for example, like, you know, it's telling you here, uh, this one had 62 uh, missing values, which is less than 1%. That's probably okay. Uh, and, and we'll talk about uh, when we get into the Titanic data set, how to handle the uh, missing values. And you can see down here, for example, building area, it's kind of giving you a caution saying, yeah, you know, there were 47% of the values were missing for building area, 40% were missing for the year built. Again, these are thresholds that the, that the system is, is putting up here, but you can decide on your own ultimately how you wanna use that uh, and how you're gonna do away with or, or handle the missing values. Uh, so again, this is a, just a very simple way to do that analysis uh, very quickly. Uh, you don't have to go through running all the different lines of code like we did for the basic commands over here. Uh, what, what's all, the other thing that's interesting is that um, there's, in this particular case, uh, these are all, um, they're all factors. You can, for example, set up, and we'll do this with the Titanic data set. In the Titanic data set, the challenge that we're going to face is, the reason why it's a great set to use is because what you do is you take the, the information and you're trying to predict who's going to survive. And of course, we know in actuality who actually survives. So we can, we can uh, compare actual to theoretical. And in that particular case, the survival is a binary factor. It's one or zero. So zero being that um, they, they didn't survive and one being that they survived. And that's, that's the target variable. In this particular case, uh, in, the, in the Melbourne, one of the things, for example, that they did was try and predict the price. We didn't set that up in here. At, we didn't set it up as a target variable, but when we set it up as a target variable, it will actually do some comparisons for you. You can see up here again, it's very light, but it actually says no comparison target. So that's because we didn't set the price up as the target variable, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do that when we do this for the Titanic data set. Again, I just wanted to give a brief introduction of that first step. And in our next video, we will be doing the exploratory data analysis or the EDA on the, um, on the Titanic data set. So remember to, that if you uh, like these videos, please like and subscribe down below and uh, we'll see you next time.